What's up, everybody? This is Basics 201. Welcome. You made it to the second level. It's about to be amazing. It's about to be a great time of learning, development, and growth. Um, if you're watching this and you have not been through the series of 101, 102, 103, 104, and so forth, I need you to stop this video. I need you to go back. I need you to go check out uh, the first series before you get to this second series uh, because everything in this whole basic series takes you deeper or even takes you higher. Um, today, I'm excited. We're getting ready to go into a deeper dive in relation to our prayer. And we're going to be really discussing what is prayer and fasting. What is prayer and fasting? Now, as defined in Prayer 101, uh, prayer is actually communication with God and the basis of our relationship with him. Uh, I'm so amazed by that because the fact that prayer is absolutely vital to our existence as believers. Watch this. Fasting, though, on the other hand, um, is very, very significant, too. Because when you look at this, as we get ready to go into prayer 201, we're going to look at what's equally vital, a vital discipline. Again, it's called fasting. Now, according to scriptures, this actually enhances the effectiveness of our prayer life. Let me say it again. It enhances the effectiveness of our prayer life. Fasting, y'all, is the process of personal cleansing of our physical and spiritual being. It is, it is the method by which we can bring our bodies and our spirits to submission. You got that? Watch this, y'all. Fasting is... The discipline of abstaining from feeding the flesh for a particular period of time, and it is often used throughout the Bible or in the Bible to bring specific attention to matters of spiritual concern. Y'all got that? That when you have a spiritual matter, when you have a concern in your life, some things require another step beyond prayer, and that is to add fasting in it. Oh God, listen, in order for our fasting to actually have maximum impact, we must have a proper understanding of what fasting is. Let me tell you something. Fasting is not strictly for the purpose of getting greater results during our prayer times. No, 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 no. It, it, it's more importantly uh, um, um, than the means of being cleansed from impurities in our lives. It is a way of dying to the flesh and then becoming alive in the spirit. It is um, 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 trumping over your fleshly desires to become alive in your spirit body. Y'all walking with me? It, this, this will oftentimes result in the answers we are looking for that comes to us or, or the desires to have certain answers come to us in our moments of prayer, in our prayer times. Now, remember, remember, we do not pray and fast to change God, but rather we pray and fast because it changes us. It's amazing right there, y'all. Let that sit there for a second. Grab a hold of that uh, screenshot it because it's very, very significant. Listen, um, um, when you start to bring prayer and fasting into focus, um, we, have to, we have to go over to Matthew 6. Uh, we want to look at verses 17 and 18 of Matthew chapter 6. The Bible says, but when you fast... Put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. 
and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now, fasting is, is not to be done uh, with a woe or poor me or woe is me type of mentality or attitude. The, 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 these verses are very, very clear to teach you that your appearance, right, um, is not supposed to change during the time of a fast. Oh God, listen to this. Fasting is not for the purpose of drawing the attention of man, but the attention of God. Now, although um, um, your countenance, uh, the outward appearance should remain normal, there will be a definite impact on, on an attitude of your soul when you do fast. Oh, I love this, y'all. Watch this. Joel, uh, second chapter, verse number 12, tells us, even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. God, that's, 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 that's powerful to know that, that God wants us to really engage in this deeper dive or this in-depth um, practice of fasting that really generates the covenant and reestablishes the relationship that you have with God. As a matter of fact, scriptural support for prayer and fasting comes this way. There are several reasons why fasting is called, uh, is called for in scripture um, because the following verses that I'm going to give you are actually scriptures that communicate the very importance of fasting. You go over to the book of Acts in the New Testament, chapter 14, verse number 23. Uh, fasting enables God to work through us and to accomplish the things he desires for our lives. Right. It, it, it's, it's so, so clear. Luke chapter four, verse number two, fasting and prayer are a sacrifice of our natural desires. When we when we deprive ourselves of natural desires, we deny ourselves the satisfying of our flesh. Now, this is a good way uh, for you to understand how you must deny the very temptations of the evil one in your life. It is a way for you to actually begin to demonstrate to the Lord your devotion to him rather than to the natural feelings and the natural temptations. Now, walk with me. Fasting, 1 Samuel 7, chapter verse 6, uh, tells us fasting can bring a confession of sin in our lives. You're at a place that you're vulnerable and you're open, you're sensitive to the things of God, and you open up and you op operate in a level of repentance that is needed for all of us. A greater awareness of our need of God comes through fasting a greater awareness of our desires to have or be in right standing with God comes because of fasting. Ezra turns around and tells us in the eighth chapter, verse 21 through 23, fasting gives our prayers more of a, yes, more of an impact, more of a punch, um, if you will. This passage shows how God provided for his people in a practical and a very powerful way. And as a result of their humbling themselves before God and then uh, um, stating their need, God honored their prayers. I'm telling you, some of the times that we've prayed and we have not gotten the answers that we so desired or had so wanted, God says there's something that you're missing that you need to be able to connect with him with. Here's another one. Group fasting can be used to bring about an answer to a particular need. Yes, group fasting. Joel, uh, again, the first chapter, verse number 14, talks about this, and repentance was needed in this particular passage. And, and, and a group, and a gathering group, a community, um, 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 fasted together to seek an answer for that. Now, fasting also gives us strength to withstand the enemy of God and the temptation 
more effectively. You see that in Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse number two. Now, although prayer and fasting together can accomplish many powerful things, it is, it is incumbent upon us, it is imperative that you understand that the act of fasting is not holy in and of itself. Oh yeah, you know, many people fast. You got intermediate, you got intermittent fasting, you got different fastings that they do. Some people fast just to lose weight. The motive and the purpose of the fast becomes the critical issue. Let me state it again. Some people fast just to make it like a diet. No, the, the, the focus, the motive, the purpose of the fast is a critical and vital issue. In Jeremiah, the people of God were fasting and were involved in what we would call holy acts. And they were doing these holy acts before God. Yet their actions without pure hearts produce the same result, watch this, that sin does. Yeah, yeah. God did not hear their cries because they didn't have pure hearts. They didn't have pure intentions. Remember, acts of holiness do not bring a life of holiness. Right? There must be a change from the inside out. You got that? Now, now, Jeremiah, the 14th chapter, verse number 12, this is what it says. When they fast, I'm not going to listen to their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and grain offering, I'm not going to accept them. Rather, I'm going to make an end of them by the sword, famine and pestilence. Y'all, y'all got to understand. Make sure your motives are right. Make sure your heart is right. Make sure your intentions are pure about why it is that you're fasting concerning the supplication or the prayer of what it is that you're asking of God. Let's apply this prayer and fasting to your life. First Samuel chapter seven, we're told that how God intervened though the fasting and prayer of his people. Uh, through through the fasting and prayer of his people. The, the, the key, people God, is this. The key is, 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 is his provision of their needs was the confession of their sin. The, the, the emphasis, um, uh, the, the cleansing work um, that, that prayer and fasting has on your life, as a result, God is able to answer the prayers of a holy people. For Samuel chapter seven, verse number six, when they had assembled at Mizpah, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord. On that day, they fasted and there they confessed, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel was leader of Israel at Mizpah. An another um, aspect of prayer and fasting is related to the people of God being ready to be used by him. Acts chapter 13, verse one through three, read it when you get a chance, because in that particular passage, you will find that worship and fasting were vital to the preparation of God's people being sent out to do God's work. If we're going to see the blessings of the Lord upon our lives, uh, there must be acts of commitment unto the Lord. And fasting is such an act, believe it or not. Now, um, the Bible tells us right here, it says, now there were at Antioch, Acts chapter 13, verse 1, in the church uh, that there was, that's, that was there, prophets, and teachers, Barnabas and Simeon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manan, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, 
um, and Saul. While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. And then they had, and then when they had fasted, watch this. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Y'all, you got to be prepared. When you start to fast, you're going to start to see some things. When you, get, when you start to fast, you might be used and be purposed for a specific assignment. Um, when you start to put this into action, watch this what happens. It is God's desire. It is God's desire that all believers desire to draw closer to him. And as a result, watch this. We have an opportunity to focus on our relationship with him by disciplining our bodies and our spirits. Having a consistently positive experience in this particular area will result in the significant and spiritual growth in your life. So it is imperative that we implement this discipline of our faith into our lives. The relevancy of fasting will only be seen clearly when you begin to implement it into your life. So why don't you go ahead and start today? Try it. Take one day out of the week. I would encourage you to do that. Because what you're doing is you're giving your body a Sabbath. You're giving your body a rest. You're giving a body a time to reset itself. Not only that, but you give your spirit time to be able to commune with God, to fellowship with God, that you get past all of the busyness of life and you allow your body, your spirit man, to seek the very one that created it. Think about this, y'all. Once you make it a part of your life, However you discover um, that it is a vital and a dynamic part of your life, your daily walk with Christ, listen, you'll start to see some amazing things happen. So let's implement this prayer and fasting. Choose a specific area of your life in which you want to see God really work. Having that specific area to focus on can help you keep you keep you rather from becoming distracted in your prayer. Here's number two. Catch this. Through prayer, determine the amount of time that you're going to give to your fast. It is suggested that you, you not go beyond three days and should not go without liquids. I mean, this, literally, you got to be able to consider what it is that you really can handle. Don't go beyond. If you go straight dry fasting where you do not eat anything, uh, listen, don't go beyond three days. Come on, let's, let's be smart, right? Uh, we're not Jesus. <laughs> you cannot do 40 days or 40 nights, I promise you. Um, um, number three, as best as you can, try to spend the meal times in prayer during your fast. This will help you work through the discipline of not eating. Yeah, feed your spirit, not your fleshly man. Right. So during your fast, look up scriptures that give answers to the issues or the concerns that you have. Um, um, and often the victory in the particular area is the ability to defeat the enemy through quoting God's word. You, you, you pray. Your prayers are not amiss or your prayers are not mishandled when you pray with scripture. Capture that, please. During your fast, keep a journal of your time spent with the Lord. You will be amazed at the answers that God will bring during this particular time. You will be amazed at the answers that God will bring. And you'll be amazed also knowing that God is right there with you, hearing everything that comes forth out of your mouth. Having something um, you can refer back on will encourage your faith. And the next time you're facing the challenges of what life could bring, you can go back to that particular journal and be able to recite some of the things that brought you through it before. Listen, number six, remember that private fast are between you and the Lord. Should not be done by bringing attention to yourself. I don't want you taking those selfies and posting that you're fasting. No, 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 no. The purpose of your fast is to focus on the spiritual work, your desire for your life, not for public attention. 
And then here we are, number seven, expect the Lord to do a cleansing work in your life. As a fast can cleanse the impurities of your body physically, you also will experience a tremendous cleansing of your spiritual life. Listen, y'all, this will bring about a freedom of your daily life and a joy you are not used to experiencing. Man, I can't wait to hear some of the results of you all taking our time to fast. I'm telling you, it's really going to bless you. Let's get ready for the assignments, right? Let's determine a specific area uh, of your walk with Christ in which you would really like to see victory. Determine that, okay? Number two, read the following passages, 1 Samuel 7, chapter, uh, verses 2 through 13, and then also look at Acts chapter 13, verse 1 through 3. I want you to memorize these following verses, Joel uh, 1, verse 14, and Ezra chapter 8, verse 21. Again, go into this. Read your Bible at least 15 minutes per day. Pray at least 15. Y'all notice I added some, added some minutes to that, right? Yeah. Um, read about 15 minutes per day. Pray at least 15 minutes per day. Um, complete sermon notes uh, for at least one of the services that we have within the week. Um, and man, it's going to be great. Um, I think it's going to be amazing. That's prayer and fasting. Now you move from just communicating with God to now acting with your prayer or even as much as fasting to get results for specific areas of special needs. I'm looking forward to the answers. I'm looking forward to you conquering. I'm looking forward to you, yes, obtaining all that you need to obtain. I'm Bishop Johnny Withers. This has been prayer and fasting. This is a whole nother level of your prayer life. This is Basics 201, Believers Advancing Systematically into Christian Service. I thank you again uh, for tuning in, watching, and even paying attention. I hope something was said that encouraged you in your walk with the Lord. Get to the homework. Get it done. I'm excited about your future. Let's get ready. Let's go. I'll see y'all. Peace.